here we go. Week 14, lesson number one. This is our second to last lesson of the year. Now, we're going over the homework answers. We're going over a do it. We got some linear regression problems with predicted values to discuss. And then, um, woven through there, there'll be a couple of review questions. Um, also, at the same time, we're going to be doing final review one, final review two, final review three, and final review four. Also, about that, um, those final review assignments, each of them have linear regression problems on them. So you have to make sure that you watch these videos and understand the videos before you do those questions. Okay, let's stop and start here. And here. Okay, today's do it. Give it a shot. Okay, so, you know, pretty straightforward trigonometry problem here. We want to find psi PQ, and with the 30 degrees, I can use either sine or cosine, but I'm going to use the opposite being 6, because that's across from it, and then PQ, which is the hypotenuse, we'll figure out. So the sine of 30 is going to be 6 over PQ. Sine of 30 is a half, so that's 6 over PQ. Cross multiply, and I get 0.5 times PQ is 6. And I divide both sides by 0.5, and I get 12. Okay? Pretty straightforward problem there with trig. Try these two questions. Okay, so on the first one, which statistic cannot be determined? It would be, because from a box plot, it would be because oh, the one that says the scores that occur most frequently. The reason it's pretty straightforward. There aren't. There's nothing about the mode in a box plot. The lowest score is the minimum. The median score is the middle of the box. The highest score is the maximum. Um, the mode is not part of that. Tony's scores on five math tests were 80, 49, 70, 71, and 80. They want you to choose 70 because they put it in the middle there. But you have to remember, anytime you do a... Uh, um, a median problem, you always have to line them up in order. So the middle one, when you line them in order, they go 49, 70, 71, 80, 80, 71 is in the middle. Oh, I don't know why I put it on 70. It should be 71. Don't know why I did that. Once again, you know what, just to make this correct, I'm going to move it over to 71. There we go. A little quick correction there. All right, give this one a try. Oh, which statement is correct? Namely, that the data for basketball players have a greater mean than the data for soccer players. If you look at the soccer players, it's mostly spread out around this middle here. If you look at the data for the basketball players, everything's on the right, which is the higher end of it. So therefore, we expect that to have a higher mean. Now let's talk about um, a little bad typing here. Predicting should have one I in it. Um, correlation and linear regression. So a correlation. This, this is here's a scatter plot right here. A correlation is how how closely things are linked up. Like this would be a strong positive correlation. It's positive because it's going up, and they're pretty grouped together. But a linear regression takes it a step further. It draws a line through the middle of the data, trying to get an equal amount of equal spread above and below. And then what you do is you get some values. Now, the really cool thing is that your graphing calculator will get these values for you. So here's an example of a linear regression. The scatter plot is all the yellow points, and you draw the line that goes right through it. You can literally take a straight edge and go right through it. That's one way to do it. The other way is to use your graphing calculator. There's another pick. So if you looked at this, you would say that the, um, just eyeballing it, the y-intercept is just a touch less than 2.5, so maybe 2.4. And the slope of this guy seems to be, oh, actually, this is zero. That's strange. It's more like 2.6 for your y-intercept. And zero, uh... Three, 
point five is burning a second there. Three point two uh I guess maybe fifteen is the slope on this. We'll see. But the calculator grant does it for us, so it's a lot easier that way. And it looks a lot like Y equals MX plus B when you do the linear regression. So you draw the line right through the middle of the points. This is a really good example of that, done very well. The Y-intercept is the last part B, and the slope is equal to M. So it's very much like Y equals MX plus B. And here's an example that the calculator did, okay? Um, whoever was doing this problem put in all the X and Y values for the purpley-pink scatter plots, okay? And then they told the calculator how to do the linear um, the linear regression, and it came up with y equals 42.3 plus 0.49x, which is better written y equals 0.49x plus 42.3. mx plus b, we usually put the, the x part first. Here's another one that puts in the calculator, and this gives us two different things. When we do this in the calculator, first, it takes all the scatter plots and gives us the equation, which is y equals 30 plus 2.5x, but it also gives us the correlation coefficient squared. And in your calculator, the correlation coefficient would be just r. Okay, here's another one. This would be a negative correlation coefficient, but they draw that line of best fit. They put the data in the calculator. And after they put all the points in the calculator, they get y equals um, point, negative point zero zero three five four x plus 37.3. And if you want to find the value when x is equal to 2400, you just plug a 2400 into that equation. Here is the equation for the regression line. You want to find the value of 2400? Plug in a 2400 for x. It says 28.8. So here is 2400, and that sure looks like it's right about 28.8 right there. And then um, the next one is, what about at 4800, which is the other end of the number of the graph? And it comes out with 20.3, okay? So this is a broad stroke idea of how we find regression lines. Again, we, you and me, we don't really find anything calculator finds it all and when we're struggling with that and the calculator is doing all the work for us we just have to make sure we know how to enter all of that information to know that we should watch this video real quick okay well apparently the video is not going to play it should play but it doesn't play okay so let me tell you how you do it if necessary write these steps down the first thing you're going to do is go to your graphing calculator and you're going to go to stat and then edit it's the very first choice the stat button by the way is in the center column it's the third button down it's under the delete button so you go to l1 and you enter all of the data all of the first coordinates of the data for l1 then you go into l2 and you enter all of the data for the of the matching data for l2 then you go to stat, calc, linear regression, enter, and you hit it a bunch of times. And it'll come up with the following. It's the fourth one down, linear regression. Y equals AX plus B. Then it says A is, it'll give you a value, and B is, it'll give you a value. So let's say it just said A equals 5 and B equals 10. You again then, Y equals 5X plus 10. Then underneath that, there's an R squared value and an R value. You want the R value. The R value is the correlation coefficient. They often ask for it. Okay? Now, if you remember how to do some of these things that I just explained to you, or you're confident in them, then you could try it on your graphing calculator. If for any reason it doesn't work, just go to YouTube and type in Find Linear Regression Graphing Calculator, and there'll be videos there to watch. Okay, so let's have you try this now. The first thing you're going to do is go to your graphing calculator, and you're going to go to Stat, Edit, and we're going to insert the second and third columns. I don't care what the cities are. So on the X column, you're going to type in 
Six, enter. 18, enter. Oh, by the way, the way to clear the column, if you have to, is to get the cursor on top of the, uh, all the way up, all the way at the top, the heading area, and hit clear, enter. And then go down underneath that again, enter. Six, 18, enter. Uh, six, enter. 18, enter. 26, enter. 35, enter. 42, enter. 47, enter. 52, enter. 56, enter. 56, enter. All done. Now you go over to the Y column, and it'll automatically jump you right up to the top. 74, enter. 67, enter. 55, enter. 29, enter. 39, enter. 2, enter. 35, enter. 29, enter. 9, enter. Make sure just real quick that both columns are the same length. You didn't miss anything. And then go into Stat Calc, fourth one down, and... It'll say, you know, y equals ax plus b, and then it'll give you the values for a and b. In this case, the value for a was negative 1.17, and for b was 81.79. So your linear regression equation is y equals negative 1.17x plus 81.79. Now, the correlation coefficient, you look down a little further, you're looking for r. Correlation coefficient is negative 0.86. Is this strong or weak? This is a strong correlation. I think they want to make sure that you understand just because there's a negative sign, it does not mean it's a weak correlation. Negative just means it's going down. Positive means it would go up. Remember, they look like slope. Um, negative 0.86, and that's a pretty strong correlation. Negative 1 is a perfect correlation, so is positive 1. Negative 0.86 is pretty close to that. So I explained now, sketch the scatter plot. I didn't do that. I'm not going to do that. Um, you can do that if you wish. Um, I promise you, you will not be asked to sketch a scatter plot on your test. The calculator does it for you. Um, what does X represent in the equation? It represents the latitude. What's Y represent? Well, Y is going to represent the January mean temperature. And if a city has a north latitude of 45, then what you're going to do is take your linear regression equation. The whole point behind it is that it predicts what the value should be. So you write it again, but this time you plug in a 45 for X because it's at a latitude of 45. So I get negative 1.17X, plug in a 45 for X, so times X, plus 81.79, and it comes out to 29.14. Okay, you try these three. Okay, so the first one, we input these values into our calculator. In L1, we go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then we put 12, 13.5, and so on in for L2. And then we go down to linear regression, and the fourth one will say y equals 1.5x plus 12. It'll say a equals 1.5 and b equals 12, and you substitute them in. Does the next correlation describe it? Well, that's positive because it's going up, and it's pretty strong because they're almost in a straight line. So this would be strong positive. The next one, the, first off, you notice it's negative right away because it's going down. How much will one cost if you buy 30 TVs? So you look at 30, you go up to the graph, you say, okay, I'm about here. I go over, I'm a little under 500, so it has to be 400. Okay, let's get a linear regression model for this one going. Now, I plug in 1970, 80, well, 1970, 1980, 1995, and 2000 into L1. 195, 368, 526, 587, 702 into L2. Then I do stat calc. I go to the fourth choice down, and it'll tell me A is 16.395 because it wants nearest 1,000. And B is 32,100.92. Two. Then we're going to plug in an A um, 
for the next part, we're going to plug in the year 2005 for X. And I get 16.395 times 2005 minus 32,100.922. It comes out with 771. And that makes sense because, right, 771 is a little bit higher than 700. And that's the next level up on the table. All right. Let's do this one with a linear regression. Again, if you're having any trouble whatsoever figuring out linear regression, go to YouTube, just type in graphing calculator, find linear regression. Okay, so we put it all in. The equation works out to y equals 5.43x plus 76.41. Correlation coefficient, look down a little further, it's r. See, they even tell you that there. Get 0 0.79. Type of correlation, that's pretty strong. And it's positive, of course. Is it strong? Yeah, it's getting close to 1. And then using a linear correlation, a linear regression equation, predict the student's test score after 4 hours. So you're going to plug in a 4 for the x in the equation. So I get 5.43 times 4 plus 76.41. That, folks, is a 98 test score. Job well done. Okay, figure this one out. Okay, so Bell records data using a graphing calculator, finds the correlation coefficient. What's the strongest linear relationship? It's 0.9. Negative 0.8 is almost as strong. 0.5 then, and a negative 0.3 is the weakest. So 0 0.9. A little quick review here. The mean is the average. The median is one over the middle term. If there's two terms in the middle, find the average. Mode is most frequent or popular. Remember, mode is not in a box plot. Uh, causal has a valid explanation linking the two, and linear regression gives an equation in y equals mx plus b form, but they say a instead of m, okay? Um, to find the correlation coefficient, you must make sure diagnostics is on on your calculator, and that's how um, the way you do that is you go on your graphing calculator to catalog, which is second zero, and then you just keep scrolling down until you see diagnostics on. Now, before you see diagnostics on, you will see diagnostics off. Don't pay attention to that one. Go to diagnostics on, turn it on. That will give you the correlation coefficient then. Okay? And when you have that, it'll help with predicting expected values, which we can plug into the linear regression equation. Ways to succeed. Boy, well, we're practically out of homework. So, you know, you had to get them done. If you owe any, get them done. Um, how you go about your business is critical. It's really the most important thing today. I guided a couple on my boat, and the man owns a uh, construction business, pretty big one. And he, he just said, he said, you know what? That's what it is. It's all how you go about your business. That's what I look for in my employees. Um, pay attention to due dates, extremely important. Work together on your project, studying for your test. Take pride in your work. Every day is a chance to realize your dream. Every day you're getting closer and closer to the future you want or you're not.